I wouldn't have thought in a million years I would be going through something like this, you know? I just feel like we're at the best possible place we can be. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Conjoined twins that reach and stay viable after birth, uh, at least for the first few days, there's really only about five to eight of those per year on the entire planet. So it is a very rare situation. James and Amanda are amazing people. They are um, going through a lot, obviously, since the initial diagnosis, essentially. The reality of all this is, is coming to them, so you can kind of start to see a little bit of the stress. But they've been very strong. They've been willing to learn everything that's been coming at them. We went to the, it was like a little women's clinic. And so she was like doing the ultrasound. And then she was looking, she's like, oh, there's the baby's head. And I was like, but well, if that's the baby's head, I was like, what's that? She's like, that's the other baby's head. And we were like, and I was like, what? <laughs> she's like, what? And then everybody kept saying, what? She's like, all right, let's stop now. <laughs> so sure enough, when we go, then she was like, yeah, there's no separation, they're conjoined. On the ride home, we were like quiet. And it was kind of sad. We were like thinking, why us? Out of everybody, you know, it's a lot. They're basically joined between the lower chest and the, uh, the majority of the abdomen. Uh, so that comprises the skin, the fascia, and then the intra-abdominal uh, organs, the liver, the bowel. Um, luckily, the posterior organs like the kidneys are not involved. That's, that's a great thing. Cook Children's has been around for 105 years, and we've never had the opportunity to take care of conjoined twins. So it's a great honor for both me, my team, and the whole institution. There are not a lot of senders in the world that have done this procedure. I think that what this proves is that you have a hospital system that literally has every subspecialty required to pull off something this complex. It's mind-blowing to think that, that we really have come so far in terms of um, our technology and our skills that we can successfully and confidently take care of a procedure of this level of complexity. These two are the the newsworthy, you know, media focus, but we take care of unusual, unique things all the time. That's part of one of the draws of being at Cook Children's is that we get babies from all over the country because of unique or unusual circumstances that they know that we can deal with. The feeling of any parent trusting their kid to you when you're operating on them is a big honor. Uh, it's a big responsibility. So we have to take that seriously and, and keep them informed and help them get through all the components of the stresses of this. It's humbling. It's a measure of the fact that they really trust us to take care of their children. Um, as the days have been coming closer to the actual separation, mom has been getting more emotional because it's a day that she's been thinking of. Probably since she got the original ultrasound that showed that they were joined. Sometimes we come in here and I'm like, hey, I've seen you before. The doctor that's been around our son or even Aaliyah. So it's like, so they're all like, hey, I've, not I've noticed you too. So it's kind of like, we're family here. How about that? <laughs> it takes a lot of pressure and anxiety off when you know everybody's going to be taken care of or your own kid is going to be taken care of. I just feel like we're at the best possible place we can be. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. So basically, we've been preparing about eight to nine months for this slowly initially, and then things speed up certainly after the babies are born. The number of people in the OR that day is essentially double or a little bit more than double than a normal big operation because we truly have to have completely separate teams for each baby, be able to take care of them completely equally with no sacrifices in any quality of anything, being able to keep counts straight in the operating room and have redundancies of everything. I've had the privilege of being involved in two of these prior, and the pearls of quote-unquote wisdom that I brought from that is, number one, it's truly a team effort. The role of collaboration between departments is incredibly important so that everybody understands what the game plan is gonna be, both taking care of the babies as they've been growing, that's the neonatologist's predominant job initially, but we need to be able to talk to them on a daily basis, 
the plastic surgeons in terms of us planning with them how we think closure is going to be, one incision versus a different incision. Talking to the anesthesiologists, they're going to be in charge of all the physiology while they're asleep, putting them to sleep, waking them up. So without all those different teams talking, uh, it's not, it's just not possible. So the teams are separated so that each team knows which baby they're going to be on from the get-go. Baby A, baby B, uh, Amy and Jamie. So Amy has got a green team and Jamie has got a purple team. Those teams are going to have their own color hats. Uh, and so everybody knows what their role is within that specific team. We'll be able to keep counts straight, instruments straight, and everything else. On my table, I'll make the decision on there. If y'all are like, it's too loud, I can't kick, kick us out, you can kick us out too. Stay on sterile yeah. and hold up here, and y'all are going to help him uh, do the so second we'll set of drinks. We'll reprint whatever I need to. What are your feelings as you all approach separation day? I guess just seven days away now. Um, kind of what, are, what are the things going, going through your mind? It's a lot. It's Exciting, scared. exciting, scared, nervous, it's a lot. I just pray that you would just be with all of us and allow us to um, focus on our task and, and do the uh, abilities and use the skills and abilities that you've given us to um, take care of these babies and uh, get both of them through it safely. It's fine, it's fine. Everything's going very well. We're happy with how the babies are responding to their medications. And so the next step is getting them invaded, which is what the anesthesia team is doing right now. It's great because we've been at this now for four hours plus, and we're finally about to start, so that's good. Well, before you start, let's make sure anesthesia and everybody else got what they need. Baby A anesthesia. You set? Set. A, B, set. Are you guys ready for incision? Starting. Safety is the reason why surgery takes so long. For example, it took us five hours from rolling into the room until the time that we actually cut skin. And the reason is safety, because every move we make, we want to make sure it's the right thing for the patient done in the right way. The surgical team is beginning the process of separating the twins. Um, so it'll take a little while. The skin incision has to be planned, as you know. And then after that, their doctor, uh, Iglesias and Knott will go and look at the anatomy that's presented to them after we open into the abdomen and then make decide on what the plan is. Obviously you go in with the plan, but you'll only know for sure what you're going to do when you actually see what's in front of you. So they'll take the time to look at that and then continue on with their plan and we will try to come in regularly to give you a heads up of where they are. Yeah, we've started the uh, separation right now. They're actually working on dividing the liver. Everything's been going really well to this point. Uh, still have a long ways to go, but babies seem to be tolerating the liver division very well so far.
we almost are essentially completely done. The both babies' bellies are now closed. Baby A didn't have enough muscle to come together, so we had to put a piece of mesh patch in between to, to bridge that gap. Unfortunately, she also didn't have enough skin, so right now she has a temporary closure device over her skin to protect the uh, mesh in her tissues. Uh, but she's tolerated all that very well. Both babies also got a feeding button, which we put in. So they're just doing some final work inside here. Pretty soon we should hopefully be getting ready to move back over to the knee nail intensive care unit and be done. Back over in the NICU with both of the babies now. It's about 6.30 at night. They are, for the first time, in their own beds, laying on their backs, looking up at the stars. Well, it's really the ceiling, but it might as well be the stars because it is such an exciting day. Thank God. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. that knew what they were doing. God bless you. We are super happy with how the day went. The team performed phenomenally, and we're just incredibly happy. We're all thrilled with the team. It really is a blessing to be able to take, to take care of, of, of Jamie and Amy and, and their family and to be able to give them the opportunity to really live a normal life from this point forward. Um, that, that really is um, an incredible gift that not only are we giving them, but that they are giving us too.